Um, My fans. Uh, I'm Deborah Katari, delighted to um, introduce Ruth Tucker, who is a star volunteer with Villages of San Mateo County. Um, some of you may know her as a tech volunteer who might have helped you troubleshoot something. Um, and we uh, are you raising your hand, Frank? Yes. OK, <laughs> good. Uh, well, you can share afterwards. We can share how Ruth has helped you. Um, so this morning we're talking about live streaming. And I wanted to give for those of you who don't know Ruth a little background. Um, Ruth has a background in engineering and computer science, a BS from UC Berkeley. She also does woodworking and home maintenance and learned from her dad. She would rather go shopping at Home Depot than Nordstrom. Uh, <laughs> she started volunteering with Sequoia Village in 2016. And, and she started by giving rides and doing home maintenance and gradually started doing technology for villagers. Uh, some of the things she's done for villagers include fixing plumbing and electrical, uh, installed doorbells and smart thermostats, providing dog care, worked on cell phones, TVs, computers, printers, <laughs> reviewed cable TV and phone bills for savings, did training for iPads, Apple Watches, and computers, and the list I'm sure goes on. So yay, yay, Ruth! And Victoria wants to share. She also has an abundance of friendships that she has made. Oh, and Victoria is, I don't know if you guys will be able to hear everyone in the room, um, but Victoria said that Ruth has made an abundance of friendships in the village uh, as well. So uh, just to let everybody know we are recording this. So if you the Zoomers at home don't want to be recorded, just turn off your screens. Um, at the end, we will turn the uh, laptop after Ruth's uh, presentation. So then it can be more of a conversation with everyone in the room and you guys at home. But for now, um, I will let Ruth take it away and it will okay. be a one way direction. All okay. right. Let's see. So here I'm supposed to be good at technology and I'm having trouble getting this Zoom meeting going. <laughs> For some reason, it's not coming over the TV here, but I can speak loud enough. I hope that all of you can hear me. And I am assuming everybody online is, is able to hear what's going on. Because no yes. one's, yes. Oh, somebody's not muted. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you for that introduction. Um, you'll notice one of the things on the list or not on the list is public speaking. This is a bit of a stretch for me. So I will try and, and get through this. One of the complaints I get from some of my villagers that I help is I'm so excited to share all my technology knowledge and tell you how much better it can make your life that they don't know where the stop button is. <laughs> I tend to go on and on and on, and they're just like, please, I've had enough, I've had enough, stop. And we're gonna go do some exploration on YouTube and usage of the library on YouTube. What? Okay, anybody else have anything they'd like to share or? <laughs> Technology. <laughs> uh, explain that. If, if, can we see it in the participants if there's, or if we're being Zoom bombed by accident, because that didn't sound like someone's wanting to join the Zoom. It just sounded like another Zoom. Yeah. Okay. You're ruining my flow. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're just trying to make it realistic for what usually happens when it comes to technology, right? Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know what that was. Okay. So carrying on. Okay. So I. For the stop button, I promise I probably won't go over like 20 minutes here. So, you know, just try and stay awake that long and, and we'll be good. So many of you already know things about streaming TV. You probably already have a Netflix account or, you know, Amazon Prime, and you've been able to watch some of that. Some of you haven't even started. So the first thing I have to define is what is streaming. Oh, wait, I have to, I have to show my slides. I knew there was something missing. All right. Where is my share screen? Sorry. Uh, there. Share that screen and say share. There we are. So let's go to the next. No, oh, that did not work. Click there. Oh, there's go to the next screen. slide. There we are. What is? <laughs> we have pictures. <laughs> okay. So. 
in the beginning times, we had TVs with rabbit ears or an antenna up on the roof, and you got to watch the three or four major networks. And if you wanted to watch your favorite show, you had to be perched in front of that TV at the precise time, which is why episodes of I Love Lucy emptied out restaurants and, and shopping malls because everybody needed to be there at that particular time. Then fast forward, we go to cable TV and suddenly you have 250 channels of who knows what, of which you maybe use like five or six channels, but cable TV brought a whole lot more TV into your, your living room. Now we have the internet. And anything that you can bring off the internet, which is a video format, is called streaming. So if I find a video on, on the internet somewhere and I put it on my TV, I am streaming it to my TV. That's what the definition of streaming is. Most of you, as like I said, have probably had some exposure about hearing about Amazon Prime or Netflix. Those are streaming providers. So let me go to the next slide. So what types of things can I watch on streaming? Uh, with people like, with providers like Netflix and Amazon Prime, they're giving you new original TV shows. You're not limited to what's on the networks on, on cable TV. Um, these shows many times have multiple episodes and they, unlike most regular TV, they dump all the episodes at one time. So when the new version of that particular show comes out, you don't get to watch just one episode. You can watch all 10 episodes in a row. That is called binge watching. And our own Nancy Granfield here, I set her up with Apple TV uh, last week and she wanted to watch Ted Lasso. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and she told me she watched all the episodes in season one the first night and all the episodes of season two the second night. So if I would have asked her, do you want to go out and watch a five hour movie with me? She would have said, no way. Am I going to sit in the movie theater for five hours? But she sat there in her nice recliner and probably watched close to five hours, <laughs> close to five hours of TV because they make it so simple. You watch one episode and then the next episode, if you don't do anything. It wasn't 50 Shades of Grey. <laughs> okay, she claims she wasn't watching 50 Shades of Grey. It was Ted Lasso. So, <laughs> so we have new original TV shows and multiple episodes. We have movies and you can get old movies, new movies, and these providers are making their own new movies. And in fact, Apple, won the best movie of the year, Apple TV is a streaming service. They produced Coda, which I don't know how many of you have seen. It was in the movie theaters and it was also in um, on the Apple TV if you had the Apple TV streaming app. So it's like these, these providers are kind of be, becoming like another HBO or, or Showtime and they provide all kinds of things. So all of your current network TV can also be watched via streaming. You don't have to watch it on the same time on, on, your, on your TV. And you can get repeats of old TV shows. If you wanna go back and see Merv Griffin or who knows what, you know, I Love Lucy shows, they're probably available somewhere to stream so that you can watch as many of them as you want. Sports, more sports than you could ever imagine is out there. I mean, I know you all wanna watch cricket, <laughs> and and uh, the English Professional curling. League soccer or curling, yeah. Actually, I just saw the other day the um, um, pickleball championships. I mean, I play pickleball it's like this. I can't imagine that there's a pickleball championship, but I guess there is. Um, documentaries, lots of documentaries being made. One of the good things about Amazon and Netflix is they're putting money in for documentaries to be made. So there's lots of things appearing from that. <laughs> And then we have, of course, music concerts you can watch, live speakers. I don't know if you've heard of TED Talks, but there's all kinds of wonderful speakers that you can listen to and comedy events. So they'll take get a comedian. They're paying a lot of these comedians to do the shows. And you can sit there in the comfort of your own recliner and watch comedy events. They also have educational classes. So many universities and colleges will actually put their, college, their classes online. You can sit there and decide you're a student again and see if you can fall asleep like you used to do. <laughs> um, and there's also instructional videos. So 
I'm going to use YouTube as an example. YouTube has all kinds of videos on it. It's a little confusing because YouTube has a paid version and a free version. I'm just talking about the free version. But using YouTube videos, I've been able to fix plumbing. I've been able to replace something in my washing machine. I've been able to pull the entire dash off my Prius so I can put a new um, radio in it. I mean, there's just no end to the videos. And you all should take advantage of some of this because when you're trying to figure out how to run your iPhone or your computer, many times there's a video out there that will just run you through the steps. And those videos have infinite patience. So if you wanna pause it and rewind it and tell me that again, they'll do that. I don't have that, that much patience. So those are the types of things I can watch. So how do I find programs to watch? Unfortunately, there is no TV guide to scroll through. Like when you've got your 250 channels on cable TV, you can just scroll through and say, eventually you'll find something you want to watch, whether it's good or bad. Because there are so many providers for streaming TV, there isn't one particular guide that says, go here for this and go there for that. So even when you get into the provider, each one is set up slightly differently. So they present their shows in different fashions. So the choices can be overwhelming. I tried to get my father-in-law to start watching Netflix and he absolutely refused to watch Netflix unless we absolutely put the show on that he wanted to watch. He did not want to try and surf through that whole interface and find the show that he wanted to watch or test any new ones. And of course, be aware, what's coming over streaming doesn't have any FCC oversight like cable TV does. So it can be pretty wild with the content. So watch those ratings if that bothers you. So how do I find programs? You gotta talk to your friends, your family and say, what shows have you really enjoyed? I'll see if I can find those so I can watch those. Um, there's internet searches, like you've heard of Coda. How do I, how do I work? What streaming service is showing me Coda? Um, there's also actually, if you look at news online, there'll be entertainment news sources and they'll be talking about new shows coming up. And so you get a chance to try and find those. What you're doing is just really expanding the, the amount of content, the number of shows that you can watch over and above what's on your cable TV. So I had a few recommendations at the bottom here. Whoops, I didn't change slides, I'm sorry. There. That's what you're supposed to be reading. So I had a few recommendations at the bottom of things that I have really enjoyed in the last few years. Coda, of course, was the best picture and it was made by Apple TV. Um, Ted Lasso is a fun story of, of an American football coach going over to coach a professional men's soccer team in England. Uh, who, who would have thought of that? Um, Schitt's Creek was a Canadian, Canadian program that didn't make a really big hit until it went on to Netflix and suddenly people discovered it and it's a really big hit now. Um, if you've ever read Tom, Tom Clancy's book, Jack Ryan, um, real um, thriller of a show. Um, Mayor of Easttown is probably the best show I have seen in, I have not finished. My partner and I just sat on the couch and kind of went, wow. It was, it was an amazing show. Um, Money Heist came from Spain. So I had to watch the first two seasons in Spanish and read my subtitles very quickly but it was a great show about this group of robbers who are going to rob the National Bank of Spain. Um, Happy Valley, I love all the police detective movies from, or shows from everywhere. So I watch British police detectives, I watch Sweden, uh, Sweden police detectives, and I've even, um, and, and other, I think I've had some from India and from Scotland, so I, no end to my police detective things. And any of you who like Inspector Gamache from Louise Penny, if you've read those books, there is a show coming out soon with Inspector Gamache. I don't know if he'll live up to what the books describe him, but we'll have to see. So who are the providers? I keep talking about the providers. And we have, you've heard of Netflix, Amazon Prime, and then there's Disney Plus, Apple TV, these all have movies and original content. Um, and then most of the networks that you typically see on, on cable TV, they also have their own streaming sites. 
and they don't necessarily charge for those. If you're paying for cable TV, then you can get those streaming sites pretty much for free. Um, and what a network streaming site will give you, like an ABC, is not only will you get to see the current shows, but you can go back in their libraries and find old shows. It's like, oh, I really missed that particular, particular show. I can go back and watch it again. Um, so they don't always use their current names, like NBC is actually Peacock, that's their streaming version, and CBS uses Paramount Plus, that's their streaming version. Um, PBS has a wonderful site. They, you can watch all those old PBS shows and all those Ken Burns, um, long, his, his um, whatever his shows were, <laughs> the Ken Burns things on, on jazz and baseball and Civil War, they're all available on the PBS site once you can get onto that. So then we have a new category that's kind of sprung up. We're all paying, or not all, many of us are paying for cable TV and cable TV gets expensive and you have to have the cable box. And when the cable box doesn't work, you have to get the cable person to come out and try and fix the box and all that. Um, now there are streaming cable TV that replace that. And basically through streaming, you can see all the 250 channels that you were watching on cable TV and it can just show up in your television without a cable box and without a long-term contract. Most of these providers, there isn't such, such a thing where you have to sign up for a year or something like that. You can sign up for Netflix this month, the next month say, I'm done with Netflix, kill it off. I'm gonna subscribe to Amazon Prime and watch that for a while, or you can subscribe to both. It's however you wanna mix and match these things. There's also free providers. Believe it or not, your public library has two streaming sites that you can watch. They may not be all the movies that you want to watch, but there's, there's lots of movies and lots of, of shows on the free sites from the public library. And there's also sites that give you regular TV shows with commercials. Okay. Uh, moving right along. So how did I decide what providers I want? about the free content from the public library. That's great. You can, you know, it's a good way to get started without having to pay anything. Just get that up and running. Um, most of the providers offer you a free trial. So you get a chance to see, is this too complex for me to, to operate through? Or do they have enough content that I find interesting? So you've got maybe a week or something to decide if you're going to keep it and, and get so you can pick and choose between the different providers and you can start and stop fairly easily if you decide I don't need Netflix anymore or I'm going on vacation, I don't wanna pay for this for a while. And many of the providers have special interest things. So if you have a particular interest, then you wanna search out a provider that has your interest. Uh, one of my friends is a huge tennis fan. And so he subscribes to a, a service called Fubo TV which has all the tennis in the world. I don't know how much tennis you can watch in one day, but it has it all available. So some of the other special interest off offerings might be your golf, cricket, British TV, and programs from other countries. So if you wanna watch things in a native language, that's all available out there. Now, the nitty gritty. How do I stream to my TV? This is all wonderful, all this content. What kind of technology degree do I have to have to make this work? And I have to admit, it's not as super, super simple, but it's not too bad once you get it all set up. And you just have to remember that no matter what buttons you hit on that massive TV controller that comes with your flat screen TV or the buttons on one of the other controllers, you can't break the system. All you can do is make it so you can't watch TV for a little while until somebody comes in and fixes whatever you've done. But it, the TV is not broken. So the very first thing is you have to have internet. And not only do you have to have internet, but you've got to have internet Wi-Fi in rooms where you have your 80 inch flat screen and your nice recliner. You've got to have the internet there. Because you can have internet and Wi-Fi in one part of the house, but if it's too far away from your main watching room, we've got a little problem. That's where we have to have the magic hand waving and Ruth comes in and tries to help you out. So after you've got the internet, 
then you have to have either a smart TV or one of these gadgets that will make it smart. And the gadgets we have, uh, typical, typical ones I'm familiar with are called a Roku, an Amazon Fire Stick, or Apple TV. And even if you have a smart TV, sometimes you need one of these gadgets because the smart TV, uh, the things they have on there get out of date. So if you get one of these gadgets, then, then you're gonna stay up to date and be able to stream everything you wanna stream. Um, the Roku, as an example, runs about $40 for the cheapest model. Sometimes on sale, go down to about 30. Then that pesky thing about you have to create an account for each provider. You know, those passwords and those logins, which we hate, but that's the only way to get, if you wanna to subscribe to Netflix, you're gonna to have to create an account, you're gonna to have to have your password and you're gonna to have to give them a credit card because I gotta be able to charge you for this. Now, if you wanna skip all that and you happen to have Xfinity, Xfinity has one of the best cable TV operating systems there are. I'm really sad that they came out with their X1 system in the last few years because people are dropping cable TV right and left. And off like 60% of the people now in the US do not have cable TV anymore. Um, but Xfinity was nice enough to just say, right over your cable, we're gonna bring you some of these streaming channels. You don't have to do anything else, except you do have to have an account and you gotta pay for it. But you can just go to your voice remote on Xfinity and say Netflix or Amazon Prime or Hulu or YouTube. They will all just show up on your TV and then you gotta do the login and your password and then you're paying for it. But you can see it without having to have any special gadgets or making sure you have internet in the room, any of that stuff. It, it works well. I'm sure about other cable companies. I haven't played with them that much. I'm very familiar with all the Comcast equipment. So. Okay. So you might hear the, the thing about cut the cord. And what the cut the cord means is what these 60% of the people in the US are doing. They've just eliminated cable TV from their lives. And, and you're gonna say, well, is it worth it for me to dump cable TV when I still wanna be able to watch my local channels? I want my local news and all that. And, and uh, subscribing to one of those services that gives me all the cable TV is still not free. It's actually pretty expensive. So for example, some of those services that give you cable TV over the internet run about $65 a month. So you have to look at that in comparison to what you're actually paying Comcast or Xfinity for, for your TV. And Comcast does those funny things like when you unbundle because you've also got internet and telephone, you take away the TV, they say, well, the price of that goes up. So it's a very complex cost savings thing. Plus, if you subscribe to every streaming service, you probably haven't saved much money. So you have to kind of pick and choose and decide how you're going to do that. And maybe cost isn't, isn't what you're worried about. You're more concerned about, I wanna be able to watch some of these shows that people are talking about. Streaming is not as simple as cable. You're just gonna to have to be able to push more buttons and find your way around and navigate with, with remotes. But it works once you get it going. And by the way, we used to think of antennas. I mean, antennas are old. Who wants an antenna anymore? But in this area, actually in most areas of the United States now, all the broadcasts that are coming over that you get through your antenna are actually in high definition. Some of the, when you bring it in to your TV via an antenna, you're gonna see the best picture you can probably get on your TV because the antenna brings in uncompressed high definition TV. So, <coughs> Antennas aren't necessarily free, but on the other hand, over, over time, you might pay for it because that's how you're gonna get your, your local TV news and things like that is having an antenna. And then you can go to one of the streaming services and get some other content. So you can do a hybrid. You can have cable TV and still a few streaming channels and just pay a little more, or you can do the streaming only and have the antenna to bring in your local channels and some of the streaming services will actually bring in your local channels too. All right, have I lost you yet? <laughs> mm. Okay, 
So I talked about the Roku. I want to do the same. The screen is pretty complex when you run Roku on your, on your TV. So each one of these little boxes is one of the providers. So you can see up in the corner, there's Netflix. And uh, I think we have Amazon Prime and Hulu Plus and YouTube. So, and then all kinds of others. You don't have to watch all these. It's kind of like the 250 channels you have on your cable TV. You don't need to watch them all. And Roku allows you to clean up the screen and only show the ones you actually want to use. But I'm just giving you an example of what a Roku looks like. And here up on the top is what the, um, the little Roku controller, that little stick thing just sticks into the side of your television. And that's the remote for it. So that's how you would have, if you had to buy a Roku to put on your TV to get streaming channels in, that's what that would look like. All right. So hopefully I haven't lost anybody here. So I'm just gonna review what we've talked about. Streaming is watching programs from the internet. Um, you can watch lots and lots of content, lots of things. Um, we can find programs by recommendations or doing some searches and so on. And there are many providers and you can pick and choose what kind of providers you wanna use. And then you can pick for your providers, of course, based on your interest and your budget. And, oh yeah, Villages can give you a little tech support for get this up and running. So I think that was it. Over 20 minutes. We can let the Zoomers uh, see everyone in the room and maybe switch it to the different view so that we can see them. Uh, um, I think it's this one. Um, It is not needed there. No. So I'm going to stop share. Yeah. And then if we can. Um, it, uh, Gee, technical difficulties when you have your technical expert here. <laughs> can I be fired? <laughs> All right. Now I'm just going to do a quick. I'm just going to write down everybody who's logged in. Okay. Um, and do you guys, if there's any questions, do you guys want to ask your questions to Ruth? Yeah. I have a question. Uh, uh, in the back first. Yes. Like you mentioned, an antenna. Do you mean an antenna right on the TV or outside? Um, there's basically two types of antennas they use right now. The question was, what kind of antenna am I talking about? Um, I just put one on my roof. Um, you don't have to have it in your roof. They actually have these antennas that are like little black squares that go on the wall in your house and hook up to your TV. They're going to give you some content. I don't know exactly. They, they vary in how well they work. Um, the antenna on the roof, and it's a modern antenna, not the old one that might still be there. Um, I, I probably get like 70 channels, but I had to pay bucks because I can't go up my roof anymore to have somebody put an antenna up on my roof. But I, I also think of the antenna as when the cable system goes down, I have something to watch or if, you know, the big earthquake comes, if the television stations are still broadcasting, I would be able to receive it. Of course, I don't know if I'd have power or anything like that, but <laughs> it's, it's all those iffy things about you know, what happens when the big quake hits, right? right. Okay, Victoria. Yeah, um, I bumped into something very strange the other day. Uh, it was on YouTube, but I'm a Jeopardy fan, and I watched Jeopardy with a thing hit YouTube and said yesterday. So I punched it. And I'm picking up, I can get it, I can watch it at four o'clock in the afternoon. I can watch it at five with no commercials. It's exactly 19 minutes. And it's been it's been recorded. It's been taped that day. So I'm watching that day. Now how in the world did I get that? So that's what I watch now. I, I don't school at seven o'clock anymore. Okay. So I'm you're watching you. that you're watching that on, you're, you're talking about, you went to YouTube and you, you went to YouTube and you somehow or another found this Jeopardy program and it shows you today's episode without commercials complete. That's it. I don't, I don't know what that was. Um, Every day I watch it. 
If okay. If there's 19 minutes and he comes on and they do and it might be that the well, whoever <laughs> the Jeopardy <laughs> network okay, has the girls will be here at 6 30. We'll have dinner and then watch the uh, uh okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> who are you so i don't know how that got there and it might be the jeopardy says we've already shown it and we had our commercial content so we've got paid for it so now maybe youtube pays us a little bit to show jeopardy on youtube and they give you commercials to start with right they give you like you have to watch 30 seconds of commercials and then you can go watch a show i don't know how they're doing that i'm not a not a jeopardy person <laughs> but there's all kinds of people repeat programs on i guess on youtube or on the internet places and and you can just watch them i mean xfinity makes that if you have xfinity it makes it pretty easy to just record the jeopardy show and then when you want to watch it again when it gets to commercials you just hit that fast forward button five times and that commercial will zip on by <laughs> okay another question you say Xfinity, it's Comcast that's part of Xfinity. Okay. Right? Comcast changed their name to Xfinity, right. but so many things are still labeled Comcast. So I kind of use those terms interchangeably, and I know that's confusing. Um, usually when I say Xfinity, I'm referring to their newest system, which is their X1 DVR. Um, it has all kinds of features with it. Literally on the X1 DVR, maybe if you, any of you have this, you may not know, you can pause live television. So you're watching Jeopardy and you need to go out in the kitchen and get a snack. If you've been watching it for a while, you can hit the pause button and then come back and just start playing it again. Even though it's live right now, it'll just time shift that and let you, it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah, I could talk all day about the Xfinity X1 system, but that wasn't what we were here for today. <laughs> So you're saying Comcast and Xfinity are the same? They're the same. Right. Yeah. Okay, that was the answer to that question. Okay, next question. Okay, so I have Xfinity, and I know noted that I could, you know, request listening to Com not Comcast, uh, Netflix, or any of the mm -hmm. uh, streaming services, but I'm not a member of any of those. So can I still tap in and be able to see a program without mm, becoming no. Okay. The question is if I already have Xfinity paying for cable TV, um, and Xfinity allows me to open up and, and watch Netflix or Amazon Prime or all those with a very simple way to get it on displaying on my TV, then you've got to log in and you have to have some proof of payment. They don't give it to you for free. Okay. Sometimes Xfinity will include Netflix as opposed to including HBO or Showtime. And you, and you all remember when you first signed up for Xfinity, a lot of times it's like, oh, for 12 months, we'll give you HBO. And then you forget and you're paying for that for another 36 months. But um, so sometimes Netflix is included with your Xfinity account just based on whatever bill you have. But in general, you have to have your own login for those. So I couldn't pay for a show on one of the no kind of okay. no Xfinity allows you to pay for a particular movies, um, and you can't just go to um, maybe you could go to Amazon Prime and actually buy a movie there. I think you can without yeah. being a member. Without being a member, mm -hmm. but you have to again have set up an account on Amazon Prime and be logged in so they know who to charge. Does anybody have a question? Oh, it looks like Claire has the raise a hand up. Okay. But she's not. But she's disappeared. She yeah. was, okay. Okay. Does anybody else on Zoom have a question? No? Okay. You guys can use that raise a hand if, if we don't, <laughs> if you don't unmute yourselves. Yeah. Devorah? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how to use the hand thing, but I do have a question. Sure. And I'll just so say, if you want to use the hand in the future, it's under reactions on the okay. bottom bar, but no okay. problem. Go ahead. Okay. So I have Xfinity and, and you said that, that Peacock, and I see that them coming up with things on Peacock and that's a network thingy. 
So if I have Xfinity and I click on the, on the Peacock button, will I get the Peacock group and can I get things from there? I'm I'm pretty sure. Um, I think if you stand in front of it, then we'll oh. see you. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that Xfinity gives you Peacock for free. That's that's one of their benefits. They they keep trying to keep people on their um, cable TV service. So I believe if you go and just click on Peacock, you can just start looking at it because you are an Xfinity member. And if I can't, they're like going to tell me I need a password or an account yeah. or something. Okay, right. they will, thank you very yeah. that answers it. Thank you. Yeah. They now, won't um, you watch without without giving getting a credit card if you need one. There's another okay, another question. Um I, I have one. Uh Ada Quinn on uh Zoom. Uh I just want to respond to that. I have the peacock on Comcast, and you do have to sign in for it to get it, but it's very simple and they don't ask for any money. You just give your password. You probably have to create an account. Yes, you have to create an account and give your uh, Comcast or in Xfinity password for it. But there's no there's no charge. They don't uh, charge you for it because you've already signed up for it apparently through uh, your monthly payments. Okay. One thing I did want to say. So do I do I do I just need to? give them all that stuff the first time I sign in or every time I sign in? No, just the know? first time. Just the cool. first time. Thanks so much. Yeah, okay. and, and the uh, Yellowstone is great. You get to watch all four seasons. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good to know. It looks like we have another. All right, wait. Just I just wanted to make one comment about this device I showed you. Um, for those of you who have extra TVs on Comcast and you're paying anywhere from seven to nine dollars a month to have a TV in a spare bedroom for whoever shows up. Um, if you get one of these Roku's and put it on, um, you can actually watch all of your Comcast TV on the Roku. It streams right to the Roku and so does uh, Amazon Prime. So you don't actually have to pay Xfinity for an extra box. You just have to buy one of these little devices get it set up and then you can watch Xfinity at any time in that spare room. So you don't have to pay extra for those. Okay, another question. Kathleen, was next. Kathleen, she's muted. Oops, there we go. Thank okay. you, this is very interesting. Um, is there, are there any of these streaming services that are doing things like providing concerts or shows um, you know, like Broadway shows or British theater or um, something of, of that of that nature, aside from the movies and the, and the series of things. Okay. I have not investigated that very much. I do know that recently, um, what was the- Disney Plus did um, Hamilton. Yeah, Hamilton. There was a live, show. it wasn't live, it was a recorded live showing of Hamilton was on Disney Plus, which got a lot of people to sign up for Disney Plus to be able to see Hamilton. Yeah. Um, I'm sure there's, I know they have comedy and I know they have, I mean, they're not live, um, but um, they're recorded, but still it's, it's like being at a live concert because they're filming the live concert and then showing it to you. So there's comedy. I'm, I'm sure if we looked around, we could probably find symphonies and things like that. I just haven't looked for those. Some pop music they do. Oh yeah, all kinds of yeah. pop music concerts, yeah. no problem. So, so I was gonna say, maybe talk about uh, the YouTube because I have found some of the shows on YouTube. Okay. Um, maybe splattering of it, but what is the difference between the pay and the non -pay? Okay. So we have some questions about YouTube that they, there are shows out there on YouTube. Occasionally they will, somebody will have recorded a concert and they'll put it on YouTube. Um, YouTube is, is a kind of a split thing. They had, they had the free version of YouTube and they still have the free version of YouTube, which has all of those videos I talked about for repairing things and they all have music and all kinds of stuff on it. But YouTube is also trying to be your cable TV replacement. And that's, I think, called YouTube Plus or something like that. So every time you go on YouTube now, they're trying to get you to sign up for it. And you just X that out and, and go on to watch your Eagle videos or whatever it is, or 
kitty videos or whatever you're watching on YouTube. But eventually, YouTube seems to be one of the big players in replacing your cable TV. So you would subscribe to YouTube for probably that $60, $70 a month and get all of your um, cable TV channels. So that's it's like this, like two different companies all named YouTube because they've you got the streaming side. The ads if, yeah. you, if you pay, um, I think, right. I don't pay, but yeah. I assume that if you right. pay for it, then the things that we're watching for free, but we get interrupted with ads, then I don't think you see the ads. Yeah. 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 So YouTube may not include the ads once you've paid. Well, I hope they don't include yeah. the ads once you've paid for it. <laughs> How much does it cost for somebody to be on YouTube? How do they get... No, okay, it, I go to, I can watch my church on Sunday. I can watch it at two o'clock because it's on YouTube. Now, did that cost the church money? Okay, so everybody that wants to post on YouTube, so far, that's free. Usually, you might, if you want to get a little money out of it, you might contract with an advertiser to do some advertising at the beginning of YouTube. But the churches, as far as I know, a lot of them broadcast on YouTube. That's all free. It doesn't cost the church anything. It's YouTube is owned by Google, so they're just getting your data. That's worth a lot. Yeah. Yeah. That's how they make the money. Yeah. So <laughs> lots of complex things on oh, TV. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All these plus channels, you have to pay for them, right? Okay. So let's look at hbo for an example hbo there, there isn't their hbo channel is not called as plus it's called hbo max if on your cable tv subscription you're already paying for hbo you're giving xfinity money the extra money for hbo then you can log into hbo max for free you have to just tell them i pay for cable it, it'll ask you those questions i pay for cable and here's they you have to jump through a few hoops and you get all logged in and then you can watch the HBO Max. What is nice about HBO Max versus just HBO on your cable TV is what's on your cable TV is all the current HBO programming. But once you get on HBO Max, you can watch a bunch of their old shows. It's their library of shows. So if you've missed, I think HBO did The Wire, um, which is a really great show. It's getting old now, but it may still be available on HBO Max. So Showtime has their own version of this too. So if you subscribe now, you can also subscribe to HBO Max independently. I don't have cable TV. I don't want to pay for it. So I will give HBO, you know, 10 bucks a month or whatever they charge so that I can watch HBO Max. They're just a streaming service, just like Netflix or or um, you know, Amazon Prime or one of those. It's a wild world out there. <laughs> I'm assuming all of these streaming providers, it's, it's a fairly new industry and they will probably start gobbling up each other. Like Disney is already trying to give you Disney Plus that includes ESPN and something else. Other than, I don't remember, but you know, and I think that will start happening as you'll find if I, if I subscribe to a Netflix, I might get HBO with it or that type of thing. They, they need to make it more attractive to keep their subscriber base up. Another question. I uh, don't have a smart TV, so I'm really interested in Roku. The Roku device? Uh, Your TV has to be, you, you don't necessarily need a smart TV, but a TV has to be probably at least a flat screen with an HDMI input. But every flat screen made has some sort of high def. An old Sony trigger clock dish, which is a great dish, and it's in a cabinet. Yep. <laughs> so another thing, if people have, it's not as good of a viewing experience, but if you have an iPad or a laptop, yeah. you don't need a, an external device, right. and you can just watch on a computer. Watch it on. The, yeah. yeah. So yeah. it definitely. Not not the same, like this nice big screen is great, right? But a lot of us end up, you know, on a plane, whatever, watching on an iPad or a laptop. So if you if you don't want to upgrade your TV, then that's another option. If you're waiting for your Sony Triniton to die, it's never going to happen. Oh, <laughs> Those things are a tank. <laughs> yeah. Um, Claire just asked about Claire. I'm so sorry, I forgot to do the live transcription. You guys don't let me do another copy connection without live transcription. Sorry, okay, forgot about that. Oh, sorry, anyway. So, your Sony TV might have an HDMI input, it depends on the age of it, in which case you can 
hook one of those devices up. It'll still work on the tube TV if it's new enough to have, you know, an, the correct input. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, I have an old Roku that I don't use. And it, I mean, it's really old. Could that be hooked up to him? Sure. They, work? they still work. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got a couple of it's, it's a one time purchase of the Roku. Of the Roku, right. Yeah. Unless you want to upgrade later and say, I want the one with voice, or I want this or that. But I've been tempted to get a flat screen TV, but the old Sony has such a good picture. Yeah. You know, Scott, app, built in app. Scott was giving away a TV. I don't know if he yeah. still has it, but in the treasures, the village treasures, there was a TV that. No more, I can't. Oh, I was trying to be safer for everybody. Um, Scott had posted a TV a while back in the village treasures. I can't remember what happened with that, but we can, we can when Scott gets back from vacation, we can see if that's still okay. available. I, I watch a lot of movies now on TCM, Turner Classic Movies, and they have some old movies that I've never saw in my life before. Yeah. <laughs> um, preferable to some of the stuff that's coming out right now. And I record them yeah. so I can, and also record sporting events. And you would be amazed how much more enjoyable they are when you get fast forward to <laughs> Through the commercials. Wait, we had a couple of people online. Let me let me try. Do we have so, somebody? Um, I don't know if Kathleen still has a question and Claire does have her raise a hand checked. So I don't know if either of them have, no, okay. Nope. Claire, did you have a question? Claire? Claire, do you have a question? You got to unmute if you have a question. Okay, we'll get back to you. All right, so we have another question from the back of the room. By the way, if any of you don't have a flat screen TV and you need one, I do a lot of estate sale shopping and <laughs> And I come across them, I and mean, literally people give them away sometimes. I've given TVs away, and, and it's like, I can't find anybody that wants, it's only a 32 inch TV or a 25 inch TV, but there's lots Frank, of them do available. Want, do you want her to look out for you? Yeah, <laughs> uh, you're, you're asking a bit there. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Okay. So for local channels, is yes. the only way you can get them is with an antenna or a cable server? There's no. No streaming to get cable? No. Those, those streaming replacement, the cheap replacements that stream, um, those channels too. You have to check and make sure that they're giving you all the local channels when you, when you do Netflix, your trial. Um, Netflix is not a, Netflix just has their own content. They don't have the streaming channels. Um, the streaming channel ones would be, I think DirecTV has a streaming service. Okay. YouTube TV um, has their own streaming service that basically replaces everything that's coming over your Comcast. Um, one called Fubo that has all the sports um, besides local channels and so on. They each, sometimes they may say, okay, it's so much for this number of channels. And if you want your local channels, that's another 10 bucks a month or I don't know. I haven't looked at the pricing on those. Oh, for pricing, just to give everybody an idea, all these streaming services like um, Netflix and Hulu and so on, most of those run somewhere between six to fifteen dollars a month to watch them. Just to give you an idea, of pricing. The ones that were the cable TV replacements, those are more like in the sixty-five or seventy dollars a month, where they give you all the different channels like you might have gotten on your cable TV. I know, for instance, my sister is paying for Dish Network right now just for TV. She's paying $115 a month. So if I could get her switched to one of these cable TV replacements, she would save a lot of money. Yeah. So that's a service that I offer at, at uh, villages here is you want to, if you want me to go over your cable TV bill and we can call and see if we can get it lowered, although they're not doing that as much anymore, but sometimes if you haven't done that call, like, hey, I'm ready to cancel, and they say, oh, wait, we have a deal for you. Yeah. Um, I can help you with that because I speak Xfinity. <laughs> I, I, I know all the different things they want to put on the bills and, and you, you don't need or you do need, and we can talk about all the options if you want to try and lower that Xfinity bill. You might get okay. a lot of calls after this. I know. <laughs> <laughs> My to-do list just went up, right? <laughs> Um, oh. the bill, then what, what 
what if I'm paying for the cable, what will it say? What? Whoever your What's cable called? provider is. I, I, am I, well, you know me, are, am yeah. I paying for cable? Oh yeah, absolutely. You're paying, well, why, am you're I paying, paying hundreds cable? of dollars for cable. What's the difference between cable and Comcast? Now that is the same thing. $30. No, you're not paying thirty dollars a month for Comcast. One hundred and thirty. No, I think you're paying more than that. Yeah, I've paid bill. <laughs> <laughs> See, usually, Comcast Xfinity. Think of them. That's the same company, right? They provide your internet. They provide your home phone service if you have that, and can provide. And they also provide your cable TV service. So you don't have to subscribe to all three of them. In fact, right now, there's a lot of these fiber companies coming out and giving deals on internet, such as Sonic, um, AT&T has fiber. And, you know, so you can just internet completely and, and go with a different internet provider. But at some point, you have to figure out who's going to give your TV to you. It's all very complex, and I can help you, try and help you. But... Okay, other question. Roku, what exactly is the Roku? The Roku. I think I showed you a slide yeah, with the I Roku. That's a right here, but... Why would you need it? Somehow or another, you've got all this stuff on the internet yeah. and you need it to be able to get into your TV so it shows. So the Roku is a device that you, you hook up to the internet in your house and it allows you to show all this stuff on your on your TV. You can't. You have to have the Roku then. You don't have to have the Roku. You can have the most current TVs now are being sold as smart TVs. You almost cannot get a smart TV. If you have a smart TV, the only problem with smart TVs is when they first come out, they have most of the providers on there. So you can get Apple, you can get Netflix, and you can get you know all these other ones. They have them listed on there. And then you can just go to your smart TV and say, I want to watch this and bing, it's up there. You still got to create an account. You still got to pay for it, but it just comes right in on your smart TV. Um, but the problem I've had with smart TVs is they get out of date and the TV manufacturers don't necessarily have a reason to keep them um, up to date for all the different streaming services that might be coming out. Oh, here we are. Let's kill that. Oh, it's Claire. <laughs> Sorry, she's calling in with her question. You want to call her? <laughs> Let's go all Dick Tracy on you here. I should have answered that phone call. Text her back until she's muted. So you only need the Roku if your TV isn't smart enough for the things you want to watch. So I, as I said, like my TV is probably like seven or eight years old now, if not even older than that. And I can't get Apple TV on it, on the smart part, because Apple TV didn't exist when my TV came out and they never updated it. There are actually TV sets with the Roku built in. So that's the way they do their smart, is there's Roku TVs, I think. Costco sells one of those. So I know it's overwhelming. Yes. I have a you have a Roku TV. So you're already set with your Roku. Yes. But but the nice thing about Roku is they will still, even though your TV is old, they will stay up to date with the software and get all the streaming services. Yeah, you might have to jump through a few hoops to get it to update itself, but but uh, Roku and some of the, yeah, they stay up. And so if there's new streaming services that come out that you want to watch, they're probably on there. Do you just help members or do you help volunteers too? <laughs> I can help volunteers too. A, a few of the members seem to have me on speed dial. So <laughs> it, it might be difficult to uh, get some time, but I'll try and fit everybody in. The company sent me the directions how to get rid of it. It works for like five minutes and then it comes back again. And I've had other people try it. Okay. okay. So you need you need repair work on your Roku TV. Okay. <laughs> you call the villages and you put a request in. Oh, okay. you're a volunteer. Oh well. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have requests for volunteers. Um, uh, talk to me after. Yeah, I think you can get my phone number and and we'll work it out. 
<laughs> I know I'm not supposed to do that. I get in so much trouble. <laughs> no. <laughs> Claire said that she. Um, <laughs> yeah, doing it as a friend. Claire said that her, she was never able to hear the audio for the Zoom. I did record it. We did record it. So, but she said she'd love to talk with you after this. But other people have the audio, right? Everyone else. So it's just okay. Something's going on. So something's going on with that. So how to cheat? <laughs> what? How to cheat? So I don't want to buy into HBO. But I'm dying to see some programs, and I have a friend that has HBO. How do I connect into that with the provision of? Work? Okay, so we are still recording this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm, it's it's interesting because right now there's there's a new shift in the streaming TV. Netflix has been on a rise. They've had, they keep gaining subscribers every month, every quarter. And now this is the first quarter they've lost subscribers. A lot of them. And they raised prices to almost $20. I know. Well, that's only if you're watching multiple screens. But, um, but one of the things that everybody knew about Netflix is I pay for it and I have eight other people who use the same account. The password sharing has been a really common thing, right? So um, because somebody is paying for HBO and if they aren't watching, well, I can, I can say this is the way I have done it in the past. If they don't even know that they have an online account, um, you can get their Comcast login and actually log into their HBO saying, I'm gonna use that Comcast account. So um, I hate to admit it, but I've actually stolen HBO from some of our members with their permission because they weren't watching it. So that's how I get my HBO. Okay. Some, some villager it? supplies it for me. Should we stop recording? <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. Well, I mean, so, it's- So a way that, you know, just to, um, a free thing that we could all do, the library doesn't necessarily have the most up-to-date movies, but you can get DVDs and even the um, online from the library. So there's a lot you can check out for free from the library so you don't have to steal anyone's passwords. <laughs> so that is another thing that everybody can do for free. But it is very common for people to steal passwords. Just, no, just they just, the Netflix do. is now saying they're going to start cracking down on it. And if they crack down on it, then others will probably start cracking down on it. And I'm not sure how they're gonna do that because like if I subscribe to HBO Max, I can go to my friend's house and I can put it on there because I own that, right? So that's not a new place. I mean, it's, it's still my account. Or if I'm watching it on a plane on my iPad, that's still my account. So how are they gonna well, figure out that the, that's- So with, um, I was trying to use the village um, login for sign up genius, genius. And it said, you already have two computers associated with okay. this account. You will need to either pay more or knock one of those other ones okay. off. So I think that's what they'll end up doing. Yeah. So they'll probably limit you to so many screens, but I'm also paying for the, the highest Netflix payment, which is about $20 a month because it offers you five screens. So all of my son, daughter, you know, nephew, sister-in-law who are all using my Netflix account probably won't get kicked off. But then I shouldn't have that because they are charging me the $20 or $19.99, whatever it is. Well, then you accidentally signed up for the real expensive Netflix. If it's just you, you should be down there in the like 12 or $13 range. We can look at that. Call me. <laughs> yeah. I just want to mention I used to be a Comcast subscriber. I won't get into the reasons why. I'm now with AT&T. Yeah. We can imagine. But uh, my oldest son lived in River City and three years ago moved to Palm Springs area. Former Giants ticket holder. You can't get Giants on TV in right. Southern California. But he can log into my AT and T and get it on his big screen. Right. TV. Yep. Now my daughter, who now lives in Sacramento, is a big Giants fan, and so she uses Dad's login to to get Giants games. Although some of the games now are very regional. 
I know one of my friends was visiting somebody in South Carolina and wanted to watch one of the games here and it would not let her, I mean, she could log into the Comcast, but Comcast says, no, you're, you're out of areas. So you can't see that game, but okay. that's a whole nother thing, but. That hasn't been a problem yet. With yeah. Sun, but I, Friday night's Giants game is on Apple TV. Right. Does that mean I can't get it on my regular television? That's probably true. So <laughs> these streaming services in an effort to get you on are starting to buy content that will get you to have to buy the streaming service. If you want to watch all your Apple games, I think um, or all your T Giants games, you, you might have to actually subscribe to something else to get them all. I know um, last year they had some of them on YouTube. The Giants games were on YouTube, but I think that was the free version of YouTube, but you still had to know how to get YouTube on your TV if you wanted to watch the Giants I games. I can watch it on my Mm -hmm. You can always watch it on your computer. That's, Roku, like right. So that's the one of the other beauties about streaming services is you don't have to watch the content on your 80 inch flat screen in the living room. You can actually, if you're not feeling well, you want to stay in bed, you can bring a little iPad to bed with you and, and watch whatever you want on the little iPad. So those, that's just one of the beauties of, of everything coming over the computer. Next week I'm going to be in Mexico. Still mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe it depends on your internet. <laughs> yes. Just for information, yeah. I, I've been a Comcast uh, player for over 50 years. I got <laughs> tired of all the BS that sometimes you would get, and they were giving me a discount. I only had Comcast, and I wouldn't, you know, they want your phone, they want all this other stuff. I said, no, just the TV. And they were giving me a discount. Finally, they said, nope, can't get a discount. Well, finally, I said, give me the disconnect loyalty part. Now they change it. Sometimes it's the loyalty yeah. part, and sometimes it's the disconnect part. So I called that, and I finally got a really good person because he told me he can give them. He goes, the maximum I can give is $100 off. I said, I'll take it. <laughs> so now, every three months, I call. I ask for the disconnect department, and I just called in April. I don't call on a Monday. And I asked, them that. I asked them if they have any discounts for me. They'll tell me no. And then I say, I want $80 off. You can see I've been a customer for 50 years. The guy said, let me check. I'll give you $80 off. And so I, I documented every three months. I called the disconnect and oil. And I just got $80 off. Most I got was 100 so, Yep. No, yeah. Yep. That's, that's playing the game. Mind, you got to be on the phone for about 15 minutes. Yep. Before you get you know Monday is not the day to call? Monday, you'll be on the phone wall. Uh, okay. I'm just telling you to try to not be on the phone. Yeah, okay. I, I didn't know if they'd say no on Monday. No, no. <laughs> so, they do it the same thing. But always call it the first of the month because they tell you sometimes they have deals yeah, yeah, every first of the month. So I'll wait three or four months. I get my discount and I wait. Yeah. So if people online didn't hear that, he was talking about how he's getting deals on his Comcast by just uh, playing the game and calling them every couple of months and saying, I'm going to quit. And then they say, oh, no, we'll give you money off. So I, I know that that process. Like I said, I speak Comcast. So. <laughs> Well, if there's no more questions, I think we should give Ruth a round of applause. This is really informative. And thank, thank you. you. And thank, thank you for the Zoomers at home joining us. We appreciate you guys logging in and participating. Hope it was an okay experience for you as well. And this will be, um, we'll, we will uh, get this up online so people can watch it for those who might have had trouble. Thanks, everyone.